More than any other sport, surfing relies on taking care of the environment. If we don't take those steps that we need to take to protect our ocean, we're not going to have a playground to play in. The oil spill in Santa Barbara this may close down several California beaches. Increased carbon dioxide in the atmosphere has led to ocean surface temperatures and sea level rise being at an all-time high. It's a pretty sad picture. I know. All you have to do is order an eco board to do your part. The traditional surfboard, the iconic symbol of an entire culture, harms the environment, making surfing unsustainable. It would be hard to find something more pure than surfing, experiencing the incredible power of the ocean and connecting with nature to catch that perfect wave is a feeling like none other. For me, it's like my church, you know, it, it's like the perfect blend of physical, psychological and spiritual. You can't be out in the ocean and not understand that there's a force greater than you. And I either can learn to flow with it or I can get crushed by it. Surfers experience freedom in the water, peace of mind, and in the case of Todd Patterson, the ocean can also heal. I'm a disabled Gulf War veteran uh, suffering from some sort of toxic chemical poisoning. Surfing literally saved my life. Patterson wanted to make his own surfboards, but he couldn't. While everything about surfing seems all natural, the boards get made using chemicals and carcinogens so Patterson started Earth Technologies with Ryan Harris. Surfboards are some of the most toxic sporting goods out there, and nobody really talks about that. Every year people die in our industry, in our manufacturing industry, people die making these boards. Yeah, you open the bag, I'll put it in. E-Tech makes eco-friendly surfboards that help reduce the life cycle carbon footprint of a board using technology and science. We are at the mercy of Mother Nature. We use Mother Nature. For Mother Nature is our sport. Without waves, we have no sport, right? So why is everybody riding such toxic pieces of equipment? Surfing did not start out that way. The original surfboards were green. Back when the father of surfing, Duke Kahanamoku, shredded in Hawaii, he did so on a wooden board. Somewhere along the, the way, you know, somebody discovered that they can make these lighter, you know, higher performance boards. The typical surfboard gets built from petroleum-based, non-renewable polyurethane foam, then gets coated with layers of toxic polyester resin, something E-Tech hopes to change. It's in our name, Earth Technologies. We are all about using sustainable materials from the earth to create a high performance product. Sustainable Surf, a nonprofit organization, launched the EcoBoard project. This provides board makers with a benchmark for creating eco surfboards. To earn a label, a board must have one of the following resin, made with 15% biocarbon content with low volatile organic compounds, or foam created with either 25% recycled material or biological content, or be made mostly of wood. The EcoBoard project aims to reduce ocean acidification, sea level rise, and ocean surface temperatures, which affects coastal ecosystems, mainly the coral reefs, and the long-term future of surfing. Every board that E-Tech makes gets stamped with an EcoBoard label. Oh, that is sweet. On this day, Ryan Harris See the concave in here? You can see everything. begins designing a custom surfboard. We're making a virtual board blueprint, so he has an idea of what the board is going to look like in Virofoam. Before Harris can get started, he needs what is called a blank. Come on! There we go. And that is where Marco Foam comes in. So EPS is expanded polystyrene. Um, it's a plastic. Uh, it's 100% recyclable, so you can use it over and over again. 
the first step to making an eco board. Yeah, that's what I want. So, that's it. Is taking the EPS foam and shaping it to look like a surfboard. So we keep all our scrap, and then Marco comes and collects all our stuff, and it gets turned in, it gets recycled and turned into new blanks, and they're the only company to do it. Well, I, you know, I was born an artist, and essentially it, it took me a long time to find my medium. I start carving. And I did, and that's what I do. I make, I mean, you think about a, a surfboard blank, it's a six foot canvas, you know? It's a white piece of foam. And I get to do my take. You know, I get to leave my mark on it. Shaping is, yeah, shaping is sculpting. So yeah, I mean, these are all things I learned in college and along the way. And most shapers I know have some pretty gnarly art sensibility. You know, like we're pretty much born like this, you know? All right, this is the cool part. I just, I honestly, I, I get I get to play all day. Yeah, this guy's done. Okay, that was pretty fun. EPS is still a really small percentage of the entire, um, you know, surfboard community. We have, like, I want to say it's probably still only about 10% of all, like, made surf or finished surfboards. Um, you know, it, it's grown substantially in the last couple of years. So the end of this tape right here is where our fiberglass is going to stop. E-Tech uses bio-epoxy yeah, resin. Uh, yeah, it's called a cut lab. Supersat, made by Ray Benatow of Entropy Resin, is still toxic, but not as much as polyester resin, making it healthier for surfboard makers. It is called volatile VOCs, or volatile organic compounds, and they affect the nervous system and kill brain cells and a lot of other things that we need. We would all be wearing respirators, including you. Harris met Benatow eight years ago when Harris worked in a traditional surfboard factory. And in walks this Filipino dude who was dead ringer for Tiger Woods, but he walks in with this 30-year-old board yellow sap. And that was the infancy of Super Sap, the first USDA certified bioepoxy. Harris didn't care that the board was yellow or eco. He cared about the board's performance. All of a sudden, my boards didn't break. You know, and I'm a pretty big dude, so I, I'm used to breaking boards. Fiberglass. So Harris left his job to go work with Ray Benatow, who taught him how to make epoxy surfboards. Red, yellow, green. Harris called it, it Composite 101. Nobody has glassed more boards with Super Sap than Ryan Harris. I love this green, dude. There we go. So now we're doing our yellow. Should be stuck with this guy. So that is a three color marble Rasta swirl. The next step in this custom board creation. Todd Patterson will install a bamboo deck. There's a number of reasons why we use bamboo. Bamboo is incredibly versatile. Um, it, it supplies both strength and stiffness, and also aesthetically, it just looks it's real. It looks really appealing. The Eco Board project has had to overcome many hurdles. Like other athletes, surfers want top of the line equipment. They want what they know, um, and a lot of like I said, a lot of the materials that we use are new. Um, and people are resist people that have been resistant to it. Another obstacle came from products developed early on in the eco movement. We we'll just pour resin on here. They were good for the environment, but not good in the water. 
there was this negative stigma attached to it that, you know, eco meant yellow, eco meant heavy, eco meant not as, you know, lesser performing. And we had a hard time uh, changing that, that mindset. I found some peel ply. What? Yeah. So now what the vacuum pump is doing is uh, sucking all the air out of the bag. See all the wrinkles starting to pull down? It's like watching popcorn pop. The bag is now completely sealed. It's pulling the uh, bamboo down in all directions, getting it nice and clamped down to the uh, board. Now we just wait for it to cure. Um, we like to put the logos on the board that tell the story of it being an eco board. It comes back to Benautau's Super Sap. Eight years later, the clarity has gotten much better. A brand new board, it has to be white. That is the one thing that we have learned over the years is it could be super yellow and eco, but people won't buy it because yellow is associated with old um, because that's what happens to boards. Over time, the UVs uh, basically cause sun damage. Thank God for Ray being a genius. It's a water-based acrylic clear coat. Sustainable surfboards have come a long way, but what needs to happen next for eco boards to become the industry standard? One key lies with the business of surfing. Channel Islands and Loft combined to have six of the top 10 selling surfboards in 2014. Three years ago, the giants of surfing started knocking on E-Tech's door. Well, Lost and Channel Islands are the top two brands. So that instantly validated what we were doing and cemented us as the leaders of the EcoBoard movement. E-Tech still glasses a bunch of boards for Lost, but Channel Islands has their own in-house production. A consumer can order any board Channel Islands makes as an EcoBoard, but it costs $125 more than the traditional board. Here's the kicker. So the typical consumer gets sticker shock when they have this board here that looks just like this one. They're gonna get the one that's cheaper, right? The main reason for the price increase? Bio epoxy resin costs more and requires more hours of labor. But Harris has an argument for that. Well, this one over here that's eco, that's made with super sap, that's epoxy, it's gonna last a lot longer. So the actuality is this may last twice as long as this one. You've saved money. Beyond stoked. I cannot believe this is mine. Ryan Harris has finished the custom board with a bamboo deck. The sticker price, $1,000. Sustainable. I mean, that's the, that's the word. So um, it's worth the couple extra bucks to have something handcrafted that you feel good about and uh, you're not hurting the environment. Eco boards to really take off. The biggest key lies with the superstars of surfing. Thank you. Congratulations. Uh, people like Rob Machado, Kelly Slater, um, and all their help with all the green initiatives and stuff like that. I mean, it's that's that's massive for our industry. The biggest boost in the movement came last year when Kelly Slater rode an eco board in the world tour. He's the Jordan of surfing. People follow what he does. Rumors have surfaced that Kelly Slater has become the majority stockholder of Firewire, who makes eco boards using Super Sap. In June, a Firewire rider made history. Uh, WCT Surfer won on an eco board. First time. Australian surfer Sally Fitzgibbons won the Fiji Pro title and finished second in the Vans US Open of Surfing. Currently, she's the third-ranked female surfer in the world. And we think that in the very near future, there will be more victories of surf pro surfers on eco boards, which also is then good for this movement. Only time will tell where this movement will go, but one thing is for sure, 
E-Tech will continue to push the envelope of surfing and sustainability. We're just barely giving in the industry a sample of what it can handle. So now it's, it likes green. We're gonna take it a step further and go, okay, well, how about super green and reducing the amount of fiberglass? Eventually we do wanna get to a zero fiberglass board, but it, industry's just not quite ready yet. You know, Ryan and I started this factory on a shoestring. Neither of us had any money, but we had a dream. Uh, it's been a long, hard struggle, but we've been at the forefront of this from the beginning. And, uh, and we're really proud of that. We're really proud to continue to innovate, to continue to push the limits of what is possible, both in terms of environmental sustainability and in performance. If nothing changes, surf breaks around the globe will be threatened by perennial high tide as sea levels continue to rise. Ocean acidification endangers the coral reefs, but the natural sport of surfing hopes to be a role model to the world by reducing our carbon footprint using eco-friendly boards, making surfing more sustainable and something future generations will be able to enjoy.